Hello my friends, I'm here with my coffee and uh, it is a little bit lukewarm, but we do what we can do, don't we? It's been a while since I've come on here and I've chatted. Uh, I've been using the my YouTube channel for more of a, um, a place to for our church videos to land. Uh, we, we have been cranking them out the best we can and so I've been the tech guy and the sound guy and the video editor and the social media guru and really I'm not that great at it. We have been filming all of our things with our cameras and our phones on our cameras so you can imagine. Um, but we do what we can do, don't we? It's it's what it is in life. You just do what you can do. But anyway, but it's been a while since I've come on here and chatted and I tell you when I um, when this all this started, this great pandemic, I intended on being um, you know, using all this, you know, this situation to kind of be a light and be a voice of reason and be, you know, all of these things. I mean, I have been homebound before. And to be honest with you, being home, I've been homebound and so sick that I haven't been able to do with, do anything, you know, for myself. Being homebound and actually being fairly healthy is a new experience for me. So, um, I am one of those weird people that have actually done self-isolation and self-quarantine, I've done it pretty good. You know, I've uh, cooked the things and I've organized things and I've been fairly creative and, you know, my family has been fed and I've read a lot of books and, um, you know, I just, I've had, had all of this wonderful energy um, and yet I have found that some of my creativity, some of the creativity that helps me write and express myself has been a little dampered. And that is, that's really unusual for me because I have found in my life, now I have, you know, I have had to do a lot of hard things. I've had to learn to walk again. I've had to, I have been in um, treatment for cardiomyopathy since I was 27 and I'm, 48 now. So you can imagine I've had a lifetime of just, just uncertainty. And, um, you know, even, um, we've, you know, dealt with infertility and adoption and, you know, have a miracle son and, um, all of these, all of these things. And I've always felt like those touchstone things, those events in my life have spurred on, uh, creativity and spurred on the desire and the motivation to share my experiences with other people and be a light and be a blessing. And um, while I am certainly not in the depths of the despair, you know, I and I've been there, I've been, you know, to the point that I couldn't felt like I couldn't get out of bed. Um, but while I have not been there this time, there's a certain level of anxiety. It's a different kind of anxiety than, you know, um, than some things I've experienced in my life. Of course, it's always the anxiety of the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the world's going to look like. We don't know if, you know, our family is spread all over. You know, I can't visually even drive by my parents' house and have them wave at me to make sure they're okay. You know, um, they're eight and a half, nine hours away from me. So those kinds of situations, those helplessness, uh, that helplessness, I think all of us are experiencing to some extent. We don't know how the world's going to look, you know, in a few months. We don't know, you know, how easy it is. Is it for us to go back to what we considered normal? Um, there's all that level, that little bit of level and anxiety. Trust me, I, you know, I'm a homeschooler. Um, homeschool has um, been a part of our life since my son was in the first grade and he is now a senior. Uh, so I recognize all the benefits of that. I realize, you know, I also realize that homeschool has looked a lot different for us, even being home because we're used to being and going to co-op and going on field trips and going and having experiences and volunteering and all of those things that we have been used to, um, have not been there. So, you know, that part, um, has been difficult, but the other part of it, the other part of, of, of allowing my son to, um, just learn and blossom and thrive. I mean, he took apart his Xbox 
the other day and put it back together. It's still not working. He took it apart to fix it. It's still not working, but he took it all apart and he put it back together. He has practiced hours on his guitar, you know, so I can see just really positive things about this, but still there's that unknown certainty. His graduation isn't going to look like we thought it was. This entrance into adulthood is not going to look like we thought it was. Um, it's the, it's the letdown of some expectations that we have in our life um, that I think has always been hard for everyone to grasp. But for, on a personal note, um, I really felt, I felt that stifling in, in some of my creativity and my ability to express myself in words, which is, is a different place for me. I've always at least been able to, even if it's just a few lines, to say something with my words that that meant something to me. And so it's been hard. I, I have started a few blogs and um, a blog post. I have so many that are just little bits of here and there. And I kind of talk about my day or I talk about the experience of, uh, you know, visiting with your cardiologist or your pollenologist over the phone, how different that is. And... Um, and for some reason, that's been hard for me to put my my uh, wrap my brain around is what has what where has my where have my words gone? You know, where have my words gone? And I think part of that is just that underlying anxiety, that ability that that a bit for for me, the ability to express myself has always been so important and such a part of my life and so healing and therapeutic. And I felt like at least if I have to go through all this garbage, at least I can minister to someone else who might be experiencing same things or uh, something similar in their lives. And I feel like what God has told me, what God has confirmed in my spirit the last few days is that my relationship with him is the most important part. It's how I'm connecting to him at this time, not how I'm connecting to others or able to, you know, be that light or the encouragement. It is what I'm doing in his presence. And that is the most important thing. And maybe later on, that's something I can use to encourage someone else. But uh, there's always a little bit of guilt that comes with, someone who has experienced a miracle or a struggle in life, especially those of us who are in the ministry, we feel like we've got to uh, make sense of it all. And somehow what we make, how we make sense of it is at least I can be a blessing to someone else. And what God is, is, has been revealing to me is that I need to connect with him. I need to be quiet with him. I need to uh, take it in and, uh, just be, just be and do what he's put in my, in my path that day. And I don't have to make more of it than what it is. And so in that, I think that that's a good place to be. Um, if I am inspired to write a witty blog post or a inspirational blog post or, um, you know, come up with 10 tips on how to how to, you know, keep your eyebrows drawn on during a pandemic. I mean, more power to me. But at this point in time, I, I don't know, there's some contentment in just walking through my day, doing what's in front of me, and resting in the fact that tomorrow is going to look a little similar, but each day we're closer to... Um, a an absolution, an ending. And I think it's more important that I keep my eyes open and my ears open, my heart open to what God is teaching me instead of trying to draw those conclusions for myself. So I hope I've made sense in all of my ranting and um, my, uh, my, uh, my chat here. But I'm going to end it right now and uh, go on making more videos. I've got a sermon video to edit and... Um, all that jazz. So my friends, I hope you have a beautiful day. Take some time to, to do some things you love. Hug your people. Bye-bye. <laughs>